this is Brent Boyer talking to you from Adam. So let's talk divorce. When you're looking at a divorce or considering divorce, you know it's coming. There are definitely some things to do, things not to do, uh, things to keep in mind with uh, starting a divorce. So here's a few ideas on that today. So one is, uh, one common thing not to do at the beginning of a divorce is taking action before getting legal advice. So it's always good to know what you're getting into before you start. There's a lot of misconceptions out there, a lot of myths, and a lot of things that are true, and it's good to sort all that out and get a sense of what you're facing. So it's always good to get advice early on from an attorney, somebody that knows what they're doing, somebody that knows divorce, and knows what they're talking about, and can get you the right answers. So it's always a good start. Making decisions, doing things before you have the right answers, before you know what the law is, can be a big mistake. So that, that's a common uh, mistake that, that men make at the beginning of a divorce. So something to keep in mind there. Uh, another concept that's good to keep in mind and a typical mistake people make is allowing your wife to file for divorce before you do. So there's this thought that whoever files first isn't gonna make a difference. I'll let her file, I don't want the divorce, whatever it might be, whatever reasons you're looking at, it does make a difference who files the case first. It can definitely make a difference if there's children, even more so. So the reason being, when you file for divorce, whoever files first can get court orders entered at the beginning of a case without a hearing. They're called ex parte orders. So you file for divorce, a judge will sign a court order that you present to them. It might be a restraining order to preserve bank accounts. If there's children, it could be a temporary custody order, child support order, whatever it might be. And whoever files first is gonna set that up and then the other, other person is then stuck with whatever that court order says. So it's always better to be first one to file be the one setting up the court orders and be the one getting all that established instead of having things happen to you. You know, we like to say we don't want you stuck with something that your wife and her, her attorney have come up with for you. That's never going to go well. So filing first is a question of playing defense. It can also be a question of playing some offense depending on the situation. Getting things filed, knowing what's going on from the beginning, and also having court orders signed without a hearing. and establishing it really kind of sets the tone sets things up with how the divorce is going to go and how things are going to proceed so that's another one to stay away from is letting your wife file before you do if you can avoid it um, another misconception that we'll hear is uh, this idea that well we'll just use my wife's lawyer we're just going to agree to use her lawyer we'll use one lawyer so you know first of all it is possible to get divorced and only one of you has an attorney but what that's going to mean is that one of you does and one of you does not. There's no way to share an attorney or we're both gonna use my wife's lawyer or they said they would take care of it. Um, that's not gonna go well for you. So your wife has a lawyer, you don't. Her lawyer is not, it's not really possible for them to give you advice. Ethically, there's no way for them to represent both of you. So it leaves you in the cold. You don't have answers to the questions you need. You're not gonna understand the process. You're not gonna know what the laws are and how they apply to your situation your wife ends up with the advantage. So if there's gonna be a divorce and only one of you are gonna have a lawyer, it's better off that it's you. If, if that's how we're gonna go, for some reason that's a concept that your wife thinks sounds good, then you just set it up where you're the one that has the attorney, you're the one that hires the attorney, you have the attorney-client relationship, your wife doesn't, you go forward, maybe she consults with an attorney or she does whatever she's gonna do. But you never wanna be on the other side of that. You don't want her having a lawyer and you don't. There's no way to get the right answers. There's no way for that attorney to act in the best interest of both of you. So that's another, you know, another misconception is we'll just use my wife's lawyer. That's never gonna work. It really isn't possible. The people that are talking about a divorce where there's only one lawyer, really what that means is one of them has a lawyer, one of them uh, does not. So, you know, another common misconception is, is getting into this idea of uh, we're gonna agree to mediate the case, we're gonna go to a mediator, and you haven't really even met with a lawyer yet. There's not a divorce case filed yet. So first of all, the way Michigan law works, you go to mediation before there's a divorce case filed, and you really can't count on anything you agree to being enforceable. There's no, there's no contract, there's no lawsuit, there's no basis to take any of those agreements and make them valid. So you're really kind of wasting your time and money at that point. Um, so agreeing to, agreeing to mediate a divorce case before a divorce case has even been filed is really not gonna work. It's putting the cart before the horse. It's, it's something that might be going on later in the process, not a place you would start. And then agreeing to mediate before you talk to an attorney 
can lead to a lot of problems too. So even if there's already been a divorce case filed and you're talking about going to a mediator, you'd wanna get legal advice from a experienced divorce attorney because at mediation, you're gonna be asked to make decisions and respond to things. And if you don't know what to expect, what the laws are, what's typical, there's no way to respond and it's easy to fall into a trap. You start agreeing to things when you don't fully understand the implications, you don't really understand what you're agreeing to. And at mediation, the whole idea at the end of it would be you'd sign an agreement, you make an agreement, and then you're bound by it. So there's no having someone review it or giving it some second thought or, hey, I'll sleep on it. You then end up stuck with what you got. So mediating before you've met with a lawyer or before there's even a divorce filed, neither one of those are a good plan. It's just not going to work. It's not going to make sense. Um, another typical mistake that someone might make at the beginning of a divorce is moving out of the house before they filed for divorce, moving out of the house before there's any agreement on things. We're always very worried about that when we're giving advice to clients, particularly when there's children. Um, and that's gonna hold true primarily when you have minor children. We don't want somebody moving out with no discussion and no game plan. The problems with that can be, you know, you move out, you don't know when you're gonna see your children, you don't know what the arrangement is with custody or parenting time. There's no understanding as to what bills you're expected to pay or is there child support and if so, how much? And there's all these problems. And basically 70% of the problems in a divorce case all have to be decided right at the beginning simply because you're agreeing to move out of the house when really it's not necessary. It could have waited. You could have talked to an attorney first. So moving out of the house can be a big problem at the beginning stages of a divorce. It needs to be done the right way and it needs to be done with proper advice. Um, so that's another typical mistake somebody might make at the beginning of a divorce. Um, another common mistake kind of goes hand in hand with that, especially when there's minor children, is allowing your wife to move out, take the children with her before a divorce case has been started. Now, sometimes it's unavoidable. Obviously, you can't control everything that your wife is doing. But if it's possible, if there's a discussion and there's still a way to have some control over the situation, you do not want your wife moving out and taking the children. It leads to all the same problems that we were just talking about a minute ago. Now you're wondering what's going on with custody. What's the parenting time arrangement? Am I supposed to pay child support? Do I have to pay the bills? What's expected? All because your wife moved out and took the children. So some of these concepts go hand in hand. The idea of filing first and the idea of avoiding your wife moving out with the children can go hand in hand. If we file first, it's possible to get a temporary order that requires the children to stay put in the home. Now, if your wife is gonna move out we know what's happening. We know she can't really take the children and move out. She can move out. It probably means she's not moving out. But in any event, you have some say in it. You have some control over the situation. And there's some reasonableness instead of somebody just doing whatever they feel like, being impulsive, being emotional, and causing everybody a lot of troubles. Um, so that's another common mistake. When it's avoidable, you do not want your wife moving out of the house and taking the children if you can avoid it. Um, another common misconception at the beginning stages of a divorce, a mistake that somebody might make is uh, getting into a discussion about specifics on settling a particular issue. Let's say it's child support numbers or dividing assets, whatever it might be, and agreeing to things and being bound by things without really understanding the big picture of it, making promises you can't keep. It's a common problem. You want to have a meeting with a divorce attorney before you really commit to here's what we're gonna do and who's gonna get the house and how we're gonna divide things and what we're doing with custody or parenting time or support or spousal support, whatever it might be. Agreeing to things without running it by an attorney first can lead to a lot of problems. Once you find out the rest of the story, you're not gonna to wanna to have that agreement anymore and now it looks like you're reneging on your agreement when really you didn't have all the facts, didn't understand the implications, don't know what Michigan law is. So you wanna stay away from making agreements it's fine to have you know, big picture sort of discussions, but specific agreements on things prior to meeting with an attorney can lead to a lot of trouble. So you wanna stay away from that. So these are some of the, the misconceptions that can happen, mistakes that men can make at the beginning of a divorce, things you wanna stay away from. Another one is listening to your coworkers, listening to non-lawyers about what they think you should do and shouldn't do and the advice that they give. They, you know, There's always some guy that works at Ford, he's got five kids and pays no child support. And that's not really what's going on. People tend to tell you what they want you to hear, whether it's telling you things that are way beyond what's possible, 
or making it sound real good or making it sound really bad. It's hard to get the straight story out of some um, somebody else, a coworker, a friend, whatever it might be. You don't have all the facts. So you don't want to get hung up on comparing their situation too much to yours or getting a sense of their advice. In general, you want to run it by a divorce attorney, get a sense of what you have. So that gives you some things to go on. It's a starting point. Those are some of the common mistakes at the beginning of a divorce and the beginning stages. I hope that helps. Thanks.